If you wonder what this rug is about, I did. I said, what is it for? And they told me that it represents Ted, red and white. So I didn't want to clash. I usually wear pink, but. <laughs> um, thanks a lot for putting me after her. Uh, I was going to thank them for asking me back. I didn't quite know why, but um, I appreciate it. And I want to thank Sandy Vandenberg, who um, has really been very helpful. And uh, she is putting me through a transformation. I've been a professor for 30 years, and I always use a podium. And she has been teaching me not to use a podium. So if I screw up, don't blame her. It's just... <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to do with my hands, and I can't see too well, so we have little notes here, okay? And I just have to see if I, I can see it better, so you don't mind. Anyway, I, they gave me this title and I, this topic, which is, uh, you know, transformation, the alchemy of transformation. And, and I had to think about it, and so I thought about titles. Um, and I didn't know what alchemy meant. Do you? No, I didn't think so. So I didn't know what the hell it meant, so I, I looked on Google. And Google says it's changing plain metal into gold. But you can't do it. So I don't know why you chose it. You can't do it. You can't do it. So anyway. Um, I had to think of something clever, and, and I thought, well, you know, it's really what's changed me, I'm going to be 83 in a couple months, is, um, well, listen, don't clap, Frida Kaplan's up there. How old are you, Frida? Going on 89. 89. Um, anyway, but I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to look at my life, and what's changed me is uh, the titles that... I have given myself, and the titles that have been conferred upon me, and the titles that have been associated with uh, my work. And, and they represent an index of change. And then I realized on the way driving up here, I don't think that's grammatically correct. I think it's an indice of change, but nonetheless, you don't mind. Um, <laughs> and so I've had uh, a lot of titles, and, and they vary by gender. They vary by marital status. They gender by your position in life and so forth. And um, all these titles impact our interactions with other people and all of our relationships. So I thought, well, I'll talk about this. I've been married. We just, my husband and I just celebrated our 61st wedding anniversary. Um, <laughs> my husband's going to be 89. Uh, about a week after I'm going to be 83, so we're kind of old. And um, <laughs> I find that I'm thinking more about my past than the future because there's more in my past than it's probably going to be in my future. <laughs> and, uh, and so I found that I realized that how I identify myself really has to do with how I behave. So I'm going to tell you about, if you don't mind me, this is the personal section. I'm going to tell you about my personal life, which you probably don't give a damn about. But uh, anyway, because it turns out that how I feel about myself is clearly related to the titles that I have. OK, so I started out, I was born in 1929, and uh, my name was Judith. And I don't know why, when I was five years old, I said to my mother, I don't like that name. I want to be Judy. She said, OK, you be Judy. <laughs> so don't ask me why. I don't know. But um, I didn't like the word Judith. It was too formal for me anyway. So I became Judy. And I went all through grammar school. And my name was Judy. My degrees are in Judy. My uh, marriage license is in Judy. And I realized that the transformation was that I'm more comfortable being Judy than Judith. So uh, I went through school, and I went to uh, high school. And then when I graduated high school, I went to UCLA. And I became a Bruin. And it's funny, when people would <laughs> see some Bruin. So I wasn't a Trojan. And, um, 
And so anyway, I thought, isn't that interesting? I see myself as a student because when people would say, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm a Bruin. So that was a, a title that I had. And so the transformation was that I went from just being Judy to being a student. Well, the weekend after I graduated from UCLA, I got married. And I became Mrs. Joseph Rosner, Jr. I didn't like his last name, but in those days, this is 1951, we took our husband's name. That's what we were supposed to do. And um, the transformation was, I was identified by him. I was his spouse. And, um, you know, I was also a mother. I had three kids. And so here I am. I'm his wife. I'm a mother, you know, and I'm a wife. And it was subconscious, but I thought, well, who am I? I'm identified with who these people I'm tied to. Things have changed. I'm sort of curious, how many of you women in the audience are married and do not have your husband's names? See, that's interesting. And, and I read the New York Times, and I read the wedding section. Don't ask me why, but I'm kind of interested in it. And I am astounded at how many women do not take their husband's names because they're professionals or they've worked, and so they, they use their name. So that's, that's quite a change. Um, and it turns out that it's confusing when you meet people and you don't know whether they're married or not married or were married or what. Anyway, um, it turns out that 50% of women now who are professionals don't take their husband's name. Well, I love my husband, but I felt using his name was sort of I don't know, I, I didn't like it too much, and I didn't like becoming a mom, and I didn't like my identity just to be tied up in that. So I decided to call myself Mrs. Judy B. Rosner. And I put a B in there because I really like my family more than his family. He isn't, <laughs> he isn't here, and those who know me don't tell him that. But, um, <laughs> but I, um, I like my family, Bogan, and so I know, it's funny, I put a B in there because I kind of wanted to be remembered by that family. And um, so my husband could care less. He didn't, he didn't care what I called myself. So, but you know, it's interesting, and I thought about my husband. He's Mr. And all you men in the audience, don't worry, I'm coming to you a little later, <laughs> but you're Mr. You don't have to take anybody's name. You're yourselves. And, um, it's connected to your first name, whatever that is. And as I say, you don't have to be tied to us, but I'll talk about that later. Anyway, there's a big history that explains how the words Miss, Mrs., Ms. came about. But I, don't wanna, I only have 15 minutes, so I can't tell you that. So go to Google, and you'll find out. And you'll find out that Mr. is your master. You are the master of everything. So that's who you are, right? And... Um, then in the women's movement in the 60s, people began to call Ms. And I'm sort of a feminist, and so I thought, well, I'll be Ms. I don't like it. Some of you may use it. It's something about it I don't like. It seems artificial. And then I figured, well, I'm like everybody else. I mean, if all the women are Ms., then, you know, who am I? I'm just like them. So I um, obviously didn't like that. So I didn't call myself Ms. very long. And um, I went back to being called Mrs. Judy B. Rosen. And the transformation uh, made me feel, I don't know, I just felt better about it. Um, and so I, um, uh, when our three children were in high school and they were getting ready to go to college, I live on Lido Island, this little island, and you know, I got bored. I, I don't sail and, and so forth, and I didn't know what to do. So UCI got put in the backyard, and I thought, you know, what the hell, I'll go back to school. And um, so I remember bringing my family together and said, you know what, I'm going back to school. And they said, well, it's okay as long as you're home for dinner. <laughs> and I had no career plans at all. I was just going to go to school and learn. And um, I had no idea about what I was going to do. And I won't bore you with all the details, but I ended up uh, getting a PhD when I was 50 at, in 1979, which was kind of rare in those days. And the transformation there was um, 
I was on a journey, but I didn't know where I was going. I mean, I, <laughs> I just decided I was going to get a degree. And by a fluke, which I won't bore you with, I became a professor at the university, uh, which was in the Graduate School of Management at UCI, which is interesting since I've never had a business course in my life. It's now called the Mirage School of Business. I can't even balance my own checkbook. Um, <laughs> my PhD is in public policy, and anyway, they changed to business school. I won't bore you with that. But anyway, I became Dr. Judy B. Rosner, or Professor Judy B. Rosner, and uh, that was a major transformation because that title had a lot of prestige, and I thought, oh, that's pretty good. But you know what was funny? When my husband accompanied me to UCI, he was known as Judy's husband. <laughs> Which is sort of interesting. That was the only time. But if you know my husband, he doesn't care about those things. Um, he's wonderful. We married me for 61 years. He's got to be pretty wonderful. Anyway, um, it's very interesting, though. If you think of the title doctor, uh, whether it's used for a physician or professor, it's usually associated with males. So if, you, if a woman's a doctor, you say, a woman doctor, right? Or if it's a lawyer, you say, a woman lawyer. I'm going to get to that. But let me give you an example of how the word doctor for professor uh, is male, or thought of as male. I got invited, uh, this is not my field, my field is uh, differences between men and women in the workplace. And so I do a lot of speaking, and um, usually with a podium. And anyway, uh, <laughs> so you didn't see me looking at these things. And uh, so, so anyway, I um, was invited to speak at CSX, which is a big trucking company, in Rich it was in Richmond, Virginia. And my husband went with me, and we were to land at an airport, I don't remember where, and then we were to take a private plane to CSX. So we get to this airport, and there's this little private plane, and the pilot and the other co-pilot come up to us, and they say to my husband, well, Dr. Rosner, and they show us into the plane, and they say, Dr. Rosner, here's your seat, and there's a Wall Street Journal on the seat. Now, you'd think they read Judy, you know, you would have thought that the, was it, he wasn't the doctor, but they were so sure that he was the doctor that he should, you know, anyway to show you that they think doctors are male. The funny thing is my husband was a pilot in World War II, and these men were so embarrassed. He said, okay, you're embarrassed. Can I fly the plane? And <laughs> let him fly the plane. Anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> okay, now, men, this is your turn. Uh, throughout history, you have been the leaders in everything. All, by an accident of history, you started all our institutions and so forth. And uh, you've been the masters, and your title has been mister. And you've been socialized to believe that, you know, you're the key figure in families, which you are. And you're the key figure in professional activities, which you are, although that's changing somewhat. And this is not good or bad. It's just that's, that's the way it is. So um, you're not identified by your marital status. And there's no need to take your wife's name. And uh, so how do you differentiate yourself by your work? You're a gardener, you're a carpenter, you're a physician, so forth and so on. And so you connect to your work, whereas we have been connected to our family and so forth. And uh, I think this is interesting because, as I say, now that women are going into the professions, it's sort of changing because, in fact, a lot of women are doing what you're doing, and yet they're still supposed to be male. And we won't go into that because that's kind of what I do for a living. But um, it's interesting. The word teacher has been identified as female. We think of teachers as female. So we talk about male teachers and nurses. Nurses has always been female. So when you see a male nurse in a hospital, you think he's a doctor. <laughs> this happens frequently. But male nurses. Um, and so uh, if women are in sales, they don't say, I'm a salesman. They say, I'm in sales. So this is why I began to think that the titles that we give ourselves really say something about how we identify ourselves. And then I thought about chairman. Chairwoman sounds really corny to me. You don't even say you're a chairwoman. So now we say chair, or some people say chair. And I just want to point out to you how these, these titles sort of say something about ourselves. And um, I thought about cooking. And cooking's a female profession. And what do we call the head cooks? Chefs. It's a male noun. So obviously, your husbands 
and uh, you're volunteers, and you're retired. And, uh, but these titles don't have much prestige, okay? So, or in the military, you know, you get a title, and that's, that's really good. Uh, but there have been studies to see when you hire young men, to, would they rather have the title or money? Guess what? They would rather have the title. Isn't that interesting? They didn't study women, I don't know why. But that's why everybody in the bank, everybody in the bank's a vice president. I mean, the guy that empties the garbage is a vice president. Well, but that's why, because you can call anybody a vice president. And, and secretaries don't want to be called secretaries, do they? They're all assistants. And, and at our university, everybody's an assistant. And that's why, because the title confers upon you some kind of feeling of self-worth. Okay, so I don't know why they didn't study women. But in any case, um, I thought it was really interesting that, uh, so I was telling the dean, you know, don't give him any money, give him a title. Um, uh, but anyway, um, I wonder when men, you look at your lives, and we don't, I don't get to let you talk, but I wonder how you identify yourself. It's really interesting to me. I asked my husband that. Because um, you have very fewer titles to identify yourself than do we females. We have a lot of titles. And your identification is, you know, frequently tied to the money you make. Or if you're an outstanding athlete, as our young speaker was, uh, and so forth. And so I want you to think about it when you go out. How do you think about yourself? What? What would you, you know, what do you call yourself? Um, another issue that's fairly recent and I found amusing is, I don't know how many of you get uh, return labels. You know, if they ask for money or they thank you for money, they give you this big sheet of, of return labels. So I've got them up the kazoo. And um, my husband supports lots of organizations, and his are all Mr. Joseph Rosner or Mr. Joe Rosner. Okay. I get Judy Rosner, Mrs. Judy Rosner, Mrs. Joseph Rosner, Miss Judy Rosner, and I got some Judith Rosner. I don't know how the hell they found that. <laughs> and, and I rece received so many of them, and I thought, well, what am I going to do with them? So I have a file, and I put them in separate envelopes in my filing cabinet. You know why? When I go to use them, I find myself trying to think, which one do I put on which letter? The gas company gets Ms. Because I don't, I've thrown most of those out. Um, or some of the bills get, you know, Mrs. Joseph Rosner. But the, if I send a thank you card or I send a personal letter, it's always Judy Rosner. Or if it's some idiot I want to impress, I use doctor. But I don't, I don't, I don't use doctor too much and I don't call myself a doctor. Anyway, so you get the point. Um, I have so many titles that I have to decide when I'm going to do what. And um, they all say something about your self-identification, and I thought that was sort of interesting. Now, that doesn't mean transformation that you're going forward or going backward. It just means you're, you're changing. So, you know, it's for the alchemy of changing. I thought, how do I change me into gold, you know? Uh, but I, so the way I thought I would describe this to you is, I have changed this basic Judy, Judith, baby, um, in a sense, in a lot of ways. And because I'm going to be 83, this has brought me to my golden years. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>